This woman may spend a lot of money and time in your store, Billy. But is a good customer worth more than your life? Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875. The Carlton Hotel. Headquarters of the man called Paladin. Hey, hey. that ought to do it. Thank you, hey boy. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, but there is one thing, hey boy, not understand. What's that? Why you take fancy shirts on easy trip, Mr. Paladin? Well, I'm not sure I know the answer myself. I just have a feeling that Whitewater Falls has become a very fashionable town now that Billy Boggs has set up shop there, and I want to be in style. Oh, this is Billy Boggs. He's the same man who have haberdashery shop in San Francisco for many years? Yeah, that's right. Same man. Why he move away to dinky town like uh, Whitewater Falls? Well, for his health, he said. He couldn't stand the fog anymore, he said. Oh, fog not hurt health. Hey, boy, like fog. Like big city much better than dinky town. Well, to each his own, hey, boy. Why is something for you? He in much trouble? If a man threatened to kill you because he thought you were trying to steal his wife... Would that be trouble? Oh, yes, sir. That's what Billy said in his letter. Oh, my, it could be big, sad mess. <laughs> we'll see, eh, boy, but it's hard to believe that Billy Boggs is mixed up with a woman, especially a married woman. He never seemed to be the type. Oh, I can't always tell a man by the way he looks, Mr. Paladin. Ordinarily, I'd agree with you, but not when it comes to Billy Boggs. But we'll see, eh, boy, we'll see. <laughs> Constipation can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, close to natural acting. A medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, X-Lax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because chocolated X-Lax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. X-Lax is so gentle, so close to natural acting, there's no upset. That's why many doctors and millions of people use X-Lax with complete confidence. X-Lax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity, gently. Overnight. From a haberdasher shop in San Francisco to a general store in Whitewater Falls was quite a transition. From the street, it looked like any other general store anywhere, but inside, it looked more like Billy Boggs, except for one big difference. He was now specializing in women's apparel instead of men's. More than half the floor space was devoted to a ladies' department where the latest Paris styles were proudly displayed. The more mundane items found in a general store like cheese and coal oil were crowded to the corners. Billy Boggs personally attended to fashion, and I must admit he had a style all his own. I declare, Mr. Boggs, this was a dreary town before you brought high fashion to us. Well, it's a privilege and a pleasure to adorn beauty such oh. as yours, Mrs. Thompson. Oh, Mr. Boggs, yeah. how you do go uh. on. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I must say, Billy, um, your merchandise is more attractive than your customers. Yes, well, they, they don't have to be gorgeous, Paladin. As long as I can make them believe they are, it keeps me in business. Oh, that could be a dangerous philosophy, Billy. Perhaps that's causing your present troubles. Oh, no. No, no, they're not all like that old hen. Oh, Paladin, wait until you meet Amelia. Uh, I mean, uh, Mrs. Arbuthnot. Uh, what's the full story, Billy? Well, it's like I told you. Her husband's got it in for me. Just because she craves high style and spends a lot of time in my store, he's fixing to gun me. And when does he propose to do this? Well, how do I know? I haven't talked to him. You haven't talked to him? No. How did he make his threat? Through her, through Amelia. She's warned me. Uh, he thinks she's attracted to me because she comes in here all the time. Well, why don't you keep her out? Well, I can't do that. She's my best customer. Was a good customer worth more than your life? Uh, well, no, I hadn't thought about it exactly that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I, I think there's more to this than you're telling me, Billy that... Boggs. <clears throat> now, Paladin, don't be jumping to any conclusions. All I want you to do is to keep Henry Arbuthnot from killing me, and I'm willing to pay you. This kind of protection usually runs pretty high. Whatever you say. I'll let you know. Maybe I'd better get Arbuthnot's side of this before I decide to take the job. Amelia can tell you all about it. Oh, when do I meet her? Right now. Look. Oh. That's her. Mrs. Arbuthnot? That's right. Oh, my, my, my. She is indeed a looker. Yes. Oh, Billy, I came as soon as I heard you had a new shipment. Yes, Amelia. Did you get the reversible silk petticoats with a lacy frill? Uh, <clears throat> oh. Excuse me, I, I didn't know you were waiting on someone. Oh, that's all right. That's all right, Amelia. I want you to meet a friend of mine. Paladin? This is Mrs. Arbuthnot, one of my most valued customers. Ma'am. How do you do, Mr. Paladin? Uh, Mr. Paladin is a, uh, well, a business associate of mine, Amelia. Oh, indeed. Mm. Will your business keep you long in Whitewater Falls, Mr. Paladin? Uh, that depends. On what? You. Uh, me? Uh, well, that's to say I'm, um, I'm here to make a survey of Mr. Boggs' female clientele. <laughs> oh. Well, how um, interesting. When do you begin? I already have. But I, I should think such a project would uh, proceed more successfully under less formal circumstances. It might. Then suppose you take tea with me this afternoon. Uh, uh, I should be honored, ma'am. Uh, 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 Amelia, uh, I, I should like to direct your attention to these perfectly entrancing bonnets. Later, Billy, later. I seem to have lost my interest in clothes for the moment. But, Amelia... Billy can direct you to my house, Mr. Paladin. I'll expect you at three. I'll be there. Until then. Until then. <coughs> well, well, now, look here, Paladin. Hmm? I'm not hiring you to socialize with Mrs. Arbuthnot. You're supposed to protect me from her husband. I am beginning to think I may have to protect you from yourself. Now, what do you mean by that? You didn't look like shopkeeper and customer to me, Billy this and Amelia that. Are you sure you aren't holding out some facts on me? My private life has nothing to do with this. Oh, it has everything to do with it. Your private life and hers and her husband's. The only way I can do a job for you is to find out all I can about the people involved. If you don't want me to do that, then maybe we just as well forget about the whole thing. And I'll go back to San Francisco. Yes, well, maybe that would be best. Whatever you say. <gasps> Paladin. Look, look, out in the street. What? There, 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 out there on the street. He's coming this way. He's coming to get me. Ooh. That big fella in the buckskin coat. That's Henry Arbuthnot. Her husband? Yes, yes. Well, he doesn't look so big or so tough. Well, he is. Well, he isn't coming in here. He's walking right past the door. Oh, oh, oh dear. Well, this time maybe... But the day will come. Listen, Boggs, he wasn't even wearing a gun. No, he probably left it in the gun shop to have it put in a top-notch shape to kill me. And, oh, look, Paladin, forget what I said. Do it your way. Anything you say goes. Only, only don't walk out on me. Don't let that man kill me. Mr. Paladin, how nice of you to come. I've been looking forward to it. You say the nicest things. Come in. We can have tea in my private sitting room. Oh, how cozy. Come. You have a lovely home. We enjoy it. Mm -hmm. In here. Thank you. Come now. Sit here beside me on the love seat. <clears throat> Is there room? We'll make room. There, there. 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 Now, I, um, I didn't know you were such a famous man, Mr. Paladin. Am I? My husband told me all about you. He did? Yes. How many men have you killed, Paladin? <laughs> well, quite frankly, I don't recall. Have you ever killed over a woman? Over a woman? Oh, it must make a man feel like a, a god to kill for his woman. To stand there, gun smoking, looking down on his dead rival, knowing what a prize is waiting for him. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Come now, Paladin, don't be modest. And then how must she feel? The woman these two men have fought over. For that moment, she must, oh, she must feel indeed like a goddess at whose altar a human sacrifice has been laid. She might, if she were as romantic as you are. Uh, 
Do you find me so, Mr. Paladin? Well, maybe you've been reading too many novels. I do read a great deal. But then why shouldn't I? Nothing ever happens in Whitewater Falls. Like men being killed over a beautiful woman? Oh, who would do that in this town? <laughs> a bunch of farmers who never shot anything more dangerous than a jackrabbit. Billy Boggs tells me your husband was once pretty handy with a gun. He was, to hear him tell about it. I suspect he could still outdraw anyone in these parts, except you, Mr. Paladin. Oh, I'm not looking for any trouble. I'm trouble, Mr. Paladin. Are you? For the right man. Are you the right man, Paladin? Right man for what? For me. Well, I hadn't given it much thought. But you will, now that you know I have. Won't you, Paladin? It does seem to give it some immediacy. You're him, Paladin. You're what I've been waiting for. And then there's really nothing much I can do about it, is there? Nothing but to see gracefully. And you won't find that too much trouble, will you, Paladin? Not when you're this close to me, ma'am. Amelia. Amelia. Oh. Uh, uh, you, uh, you must be Paladin. Yes, that's right. Excuse the interruption. Sit down. Why, um... Uh, Amelia uh, said you'd be coming to call. Oh, she did? Yes. Amelia has no secrets from me, have you, my dear? None, Henry. Why should I? So, if you'll get that nervous hand of yours away from your holster, I'd like to shake it. Hmm? Oh, yes, of course. I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Arbuthnot. And I, to meet you, Paladin. You're so famous, you're practically a legend. But as you can see, as human as the next man and as susceptible to temptation. Uh, he who is without sin, let him throw the first stone. You see what I mean, Paladin. You see the kind of heroes we grow in these parts. Now, Amelia, are you going to start that all over again? No, Henry, what good would it do? Amelia thinks things are too quiet around here. She's always trying to stir up some excitement. Oh, Henry, that isn't true. Who oh, isn't it now? Mr. Paladin... I figure if you don't go looking for trouble, trouble won't come looking for you. But you saw plenty of it in your time, didn't you? Maybe I have. Uh. But if the good Lord lets you live long enough, you learn that there aren't very many reasons for drawing a gun on a man. About the only one that comes to mind right readily is to protect yourself. <laughs> and then, too, man gets to be my age. His fingers get the rheumatism. His eye isn't so good. He'd better keep his gun in his holster. Right, Mr. Paladin? If you say so, Mr. Arbuthnot. However adept Henry Arbuthnot may once have been with a gun, it was clear that he was no longer a threat to anyone. He had a philosophy of non-violence and a body that was tending to go flabby. Billy Boggs was safe, and I told him so. You're, uh, you're sure? Positive. Whether you're selling her ribbons, yard goods, Paris hats, or your special brand of sweet talk, you're safe. <clears throat> I told you, Paladin, our relationship is strictly business. Whatever it is, your life is in no danger and never was. Hmm. Well, now, uh, uh, you say Arbuthnot's got a uh, philosophy or whatever it is? Huh? But he, he could change his mind, couldn't he? Sure he could, but he won't. You sound mighty positive. I am. Why? Well, he's not as young as he once was. He's slowing down. He's got a touch of rheumatism in his gun hand. Hmm, is that a fact? Eyes aren't as sharp anymore. I never knew that. What are you going to do now, Billy? Play footsie with that wife of his under his nose or face up to it like a man and run away with her? Neither paladin, neither. But uh, in any case, my plans no longer concern you. That they don't, and I'm mighty glad to be out of it. Are you going back to San Francisco? Might as well. No stage until tomorrow morning. I'll be on it. But if you need me, I'll be around till then. Mr. Boggs. Evening, Ben. I'll have a whiskey. A whiskey, Mr. Boggs? I said whiskey. <laughs> since when did you go off in the beer wagon? And since when is that any of your business? Oh, yes, sir, Mr. Boggs. One whiskey. Hmm. Yes. Uh, Mr. Uh, 
Arbuthnot been in this evening? Why, yes, sir. He's right over there in the corner, sitting in on a hand of poker. Oh, yes. Yes, I see him. Uh, hey, did your uh, friend Mr. Paladin leave? No, Ben. He leaves tomorrow. Well, well howdy there, Mr. Bog. Evening, Red. Hey, what's the big idea, huh? What idea, Red? Well, I never saw you wearing a gun before. Uh-huh. Well, you do now. Well, it's so nice and shiny and new, like, like it was out of your stock. It is, it is. <laughs> How come? Are you gunning for somebody? Mm, maybe. What? <laughs> oh, no. Now, what's so funny? Well, you, on the prowl. <laughs> you. Now, don't you upset me, Red. I'm not gunning for you, and I don't want to. <laughs> you better not be. Well, boys, oh, be quiet. Tonight, oh, there, he's coming home. this way. What, you gunning for him? You stick around and see. Uh, Arbuthnot? See. Henry Arbuthnot. Oh, good evening, Barge. Arbuthnot, the time has come for a showdown. Indeed. Yes, it's you or me. Go home and sleep it off, Boggs. Now, don't you tell me what to do. Don't you tell me anything. Well, that's fair enough. Good night, Boggs. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Here now. You don't walk out on me. I'm not finished yet. You hear me, Arbuthnot? I'm not finished with you. You better stop right where you are. I'm not anxious to shoot you in the back, but I will if necessary. Why don't you go home, Boggs? I've got no quarrel with you. Well, I've got a quarrel with you, and we're settling it right now. So go on. Go for your gun. <laughs> What's the matter? You're getting too old for gunfighting? It's a sure thing you're too old for that young wife of yours. You leave her out of this. I can't. She's right in the middle of it. She's sick to death of you, Arbuthnot. Didn't you know that? Everybody else in town does. Everybody else knows what's been going on between us. <laughs> Seems only fair to let you in on the secret. Boy, you... <laughs> went for his gun. His gun? It's still in his holster. He couldn't have. His hand was too crippled. You knew that. I told you that. Oh? I, I don't remember. Billy, this is murder. You know it, and I know it. Somebody got the word to Amelia Arbuthnot, and she came running up the moonlit street, holding her skirts high. She threw herself on her husband's body, and she seemed to be sobbing. But I could see her unbuckle her husband's gun belt. She got it loose, rose to her feet, strapping it around her waist. All right, Mr. Boggs. I'll see to firing my husband's gun. Well, Amelia, I... I'm I... giving you a chance to defend yourself. Well, I can't go up against a woman. Why not? You went up against a man who was unable to defend himself. I'm able and I will. But, but I can't, Amelia. I love you. Oh, do you now? Love me enough to murder my husband? I gave him a fair chance. Like I'm giving you. Oh, no, no, now, Amelia, I can't. Oh, you're not scared a little old me, are you, Billy? Mrs. Arbuth's not. Look, do you know what you're doing? You bet I do. He didn't think there was room in Whitewater Falls for him and my husband. Well, there isn't room in the whole wide world for him and me. But I love you, Amelia. I won't shoot you. Oh, that's too bad, Billy Boggs, because I loathe you. And I will shoot you. Amelia! All right. Make your play. Look at that. Any of you boys want to call the law in on this? No, ma'am. That was a fair fight and the best man. Well, that is... Very well, then. Uh, Mrs. Arbuthnot. I'd better escort you home. Why, thank you, Mr. Paladin. You knew he wouldn't draw on you, didn't you? Aren't you forgetting? No, I'm remembering. I didn't realize you had such a strong feeling for your husband. I didn't. But you just killed Billy to avenge his murder. Not to avenge my husband's murder, Paladin. To remove Billy. <laughs> I don't understand. Well, Billy Boggs was such a dreadfully silly little man. But he did do us a favor. Us? You and me. He did us the favor of removing Henry. I'm grateful. But we wouldn't want Billy around bothering us, now would we? What a pity you didn't talk it over with me first. What do you mean? Haven't you understood a word I've said? 
Every word, Mrs. Arbuthnot. Every word. And all I've got to say to you is... Good night. Excuse, please, Miss Apollida. Hmm? Oh. Yes, Miss Wong? All finished cleaning room. Would you like Mr. Wong to bring you some nice hot coffee? No, thanks, Miss Wong. I'll be going down for lunch soon. You all right, Miss Apollodon? Why, yes, I feel fine. Why do you ask? Well, ever since you come back, you've been very quiet. You look white, like you've been scared. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, I was a little frightened, Miss Wong. What scared you? A femme fatale. A f- <laughs> Miss Wong, no understand. Well, it's hard to explain. There's nothing like it in China, I'm sure. Oh. Femme fatale. A fatal woman. Oh. That's to say, a woman who tries to get her man oh. no matter what. Yes, sir. Now, Mr. Wong, understand, oh. we have same thing in China. Well, perhaps you do it that, but not the kind who uses a gun. Oh, no, sir. Chinese woman, I have to use gun. Can get her man much better without gun. Oh, many better ways. <laughs> I think I know what you mean. And I believe I've witnessed our Miss Wong as a femme fatale when it comes to... Uh... Hey, boy? Hmm? Uh, you're a very observant man, Miss Apollodon. <laughs> Look smart, keep up to date with Pepsi, drink light, refreshing Pepsi, stay young and fair and debonair, be sociable, have a Pepsi. Gun Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin, with Ben Wright as Hey Boy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun Will Travel by William N. Robeson. Featured in the cast were Olin Soleil, Jack Moyles, Russell Arms, and Lynn Allen. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. <laughs>